Good morning and thank you all so much for joining us on this Wednesday. Welcome to the Minority Business Development Agency's Virtual Subs and Sandwiches webinar with Manhattan Construction. I am Marchette Turner, Director of the Houston BDA. This is our seventh year offering our Subs and Sandwiches platform and certainly Manhattan is no stranger. They've been here with us before and pro provided useful information uh, to our MBEs and we're sure to receive more of the same today. During today's webinar, all attendees will be in listen only mode. There will be a Q&A at the end of this session where my team and I will be asking questions that you yourself type in the chat for Manhattan. We encourage you to type your questions as you think of them in an effort to maximize our time together this morning and so we're not having that lag at the end. As a reminder, this presentation is being recorded and will be available via email to all registered participants. I'm excited because we have our entire team with us this morning. Ms. Jessica Vasquez serves as our office manager, Deidre Sutton, our business advisor, Tanya McGilbra, a business advisor and our alumni client engagement specialist, and certainly Mark Preg. Uh, a part-time business advisor. Again, today's presenter is Manhattan Construction, and I will now share a little bit about Mr. Andrew Halfen, who serves as their uh, pre-construction manager. So let's do that, Mr. Andrew. All right, so for the past 13 years, Andrew Halfen has served as the pre-construction manager for Manhattan Construction. He has led pre-construction teams on numerous highly complex projects, such as Globe Life Field in Arlington, the United Technical Operations Center at Bush Intercontinental Airport, and the ongoing A-Leaf Neighborhood Center, Lynn Wyatt Square for the Performing Arts, and Texas A&M University's South Campus Recreational Center. As pre-construction manager, Andrew leads Manhattan's pre-construction team and processes. He works closely with owners and design teams to ensure all necessary resources are supplied for the pre-construction effort and leads efforts to provide, the, provide and coordinate full estimating services to procure the work. So let's have a warm welcome for Mr. Andrew Halfen. Andrew, you can take it away. All right, I appreciate that introduction. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go to the next slide and I'll have uh, Jason Fuller, our vice president for Houston, uh, do a little team introduction, a little bit of history about Manhattan, and then we'll jump into some of the exciting projects we have coming up this year. Uh, thanks, Andrew. And uh, on behalf of our entire company here, uh, thanks uh, to the MBDA. You know, this is an event we look forward to every single year. Uh, we're definitely looking forward next year to having everybody that's on this call back in our office and having some, you know, having some real sandwiches and being able to see everybody again. Uh, it's an event we look forward to and look forward to this uh, partnership every single year. So thanks. So I am Jason Fuller. I'm the vice president, uh, regional manager for our Houston office. Uh, my colleague here, the great Lail, Lail Ellis, I'm sorry. So uh, she is our director of community relations and, and inclusion. Uh, so definitely get to know her. Uh, also on the slide is Relina Browning, our pre-construction director, uh, and then our estimators that are in the office, Joe Hernandez and Kat Warren, uh, and Melissa Boyd is our contract administrator. Obviously, we've got a, a, a large team of operations and folks that are out managing processes, uh, but for the day-to-day, -day, the opportunities that Andrew are going to show uh, you here in a minute, this is our core team that are here in our Houston office on Montrose. Uh, a little bit about Manhattan, if you're not familiar with us, uh, we are a very old uh, general contractor. We actually celebrated our 125th year last year. We're still in the, uh, uh, still managed by the founding family. Uh, came into Houston uh, in the early 40s, so we've been operating continually in Houston for 80 years, and we're very proud of the projects that we've built here. Uh, very proud of the work that we've done for the city, for the county, for Houston Airport System, for Houston First. Uh, and as a native Houstonian, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of the work that we've done. Uh, we try to stay in a lot of different markets, uh, a lot of public markets, institutional, uh, healthcare, uh, city, county work, as we noted, uh, airports, aviation, uh, and, and sports projects. We kind of run the gamut of a lot of those uh, specialty type of projects. So um, 
with that, that's a little bit about us. Um, Lael, do you want to have any comments? And we'll turn it back to Andrew. <laughs> I'll just so say really, throw it to you. Yeah, I'll just say really quick. Um, I, if you have been around the city, you probably uh, know me, and I probably know you. I say it all the time. I love my job, um, and I'm always available for anyone. So our email address is there. I'll throw my contact info in the chat and just copy it and paste it and, and give me a call, send me an email, and I'm happy to connect with anyone to, to help you any kind, any kind of way that I can. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> thanks for joining us, everybody. <laughs> so we'll go uh, two more slides ahead. So to the, yeah. All right. So, um, on a lot of our projects, and, and Jason and, and Lael hit on it, uh, we have diversity participation requirements from either the city of Houston or the county or, or the different clients that we're working with. Uh, this is just a little bit of insight on to some of our past projects or projects that we're currently working on. So you can see here on the screen, we got Aleaf and Lynn Wyatt. Those are projects we're currently working on. Uh, and then you can see some of our past projects, whether it be uh, with Houston first or city of Houston on the Ardmore project. Um, you know, we, we always have, um, these participation goals and we, we work with, uh, subcontractors and vendors like yourselves, uh, to meet those and, and often exceed them. So, uh, it's, it's been an exciting couple of years, uh, on some of these projects and, um, you can see here, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. We can only do this, uh, with, with your involvement. So next slide. Uh, so bidding with us, it's always important to, to look at the, the different delivery methods on projects. Uh, I think one of the first things you should ask us if we don't, if we aren't clear with it uh, in the solicitation is, you know, is, you know, what kind of project is this? Uh, lump sum bids uh, and construction manager at risk, C CMAR. Those are the, the two kind of delivery methods that we often uh, have. We do have a design build project that I'll, I'll highlight a little bit on at the end of this, but it, it manages very similar to our CMAR projects. Um, so when you see a, a lump sum bid invitation from us, you know, there's not going to be a bid form. You're just going to email your bids in to us. Uh, when we do CMAR or design build, uh, we manage everything through Building Connected. Uh, so you'll get all of our invites through there. The bid forms are through that website. So you'll submit your bids online through Building Connected. Uh, and so that, that's an important thing for us to note kind of right out the gate is, is what kind of the projects you're going to be seeing from us. Uh, right now, the projects I'm going to talk about today are all either CMAR or design build. We don't have any uh, current pursuits uh, that are lump sum bid, although I'm sure there will be one or two as the year progresses. The so next slide, please. So when you're bidding projects with us, it's always important to be in our system. Uh, the, the first step is if you've never worked with us before, uh, reach out to Melissa Boyd. She's our contract administrator here in Houston. And uh, the best email address for her is right there. It's Houston Free Falls at ManhattanConstruction.com. Uh, and send her a W-9. Uh, that'll get the process started. And then she can send you our Manhattan General Provisions. Uh, and that is our standard contract agreement uh, that would apply to any contract that you're working on with us. Uh, once you have an MGP on file for us, uh, that just really frees you up. Uh, to successfully chase work with us. The next slide, please. Uh, another aspect of, of pre-qualification is um, on getting the, the pre-qual submitted. Uh, you know, part of that process is an evaluation of safety, financials, different aspects of your company. Uh, it is important to note that anything above a 0.8 on an EMR is something that we need more information on. Uh, so our, our safety requirements, they're pretty strict, uh, but it doesn't mean you can't work with us. So if you have an EMR at a 0.9 or maybe you're a 1.05, that's not a deal killer. We're just going to need a little bit more information and our safety people uh, will work with you to look at uh, some loss runs for 
for really to look into why that safety uh, rating is above the 0.8 threshold for us. Um, and then the other important fact, uh, you know, right now, uh, especially in light of the, the pandemic, our, our pre-qualification does expire a little more frequently than it used to. It used to be uh, an annual process, and now it's um, we do require interim financials. Uh, so if you do uh, complete the pre-qualification process, and then six months later, we ask for you to update a few things, uh, please don't get too mad at us. Um, it's just part of the process and, you know, it's making sure we're all, all in a good financial spot. Uh, next slide, please. So we're going to jump into a, a couple of the projects. Uh, all of the projects you see uh, or that you're going to see here today are projects that we currently have and are currently bidding this year. Uh, we'll definitely have more projects coming uh, throughout the year and we'll be lump sum bidding a few projects. Uh, but these are projects that, that we have uh, and we wanted to talk to you all about today. Uh, so the Harris County CSCD project uh, is a really, really exciting project for Harris County. Uh, we had package one bid last month. Uh, packages two and three will be bidding in February. Uh, the project includes uh, replacement expansion of a classroom cafeteria administration building. And then there's also a number of dorm buildings and then a central plant that's associated with it. Uh, this project is a campus that houses residential uh, programs that uh, work on rehabilitation on people needing uh, assistance with substance abuse or criminal behavior issues. Uh, so it's, it's a really important project uh, for Harris County. And if you are interested in bidding on this project, uh, reach out to our estimator, Joe Hernandez, and he can get you uh, added to that invite list. Next slide. Another project we have, it's uh, located down in Pearland. It's called Project Novus. It's a confidential project. Uh, so you, you're not seeing the client name here or the exact project name, uh, but this one will, will be bidding in March. Uh, so about two months away. It is a 100,000 square foot corporate headquarters office building for this client. Uh, if you are interested in bidding this project, you can reach out to myself and my email address is on the screen. Next slide, please. Uh, another project we have is the Texas A&M Bright Complex renovation. Uh, this is a really cool project. I'm partial to it as a former Aggie. Um, you know, the, I, it's always exciting to get back up to College Station and, and work on the, the A&M campus. Uh, this is a number of projects bundled together. Uh, so it will consist of demolishing the existing indoor track stadium and new indoor practice facility for the football team, uh, renovations to the existing Bright building, and then indoor and outdoor practice fields, a new academic building, and then various site improvements. Uh, we will be bidding different phases of this project from pretty much April through the end of this year. Um, this project, like all projects with Texas A&M, uh, falls under the, the hub diversity requirements. Uh, so if you are a hub subcontractor, uh, absolutely reach out to me. Even if you've already done work with us in the past, please reach out again. And that way I can just make sure you're on our invite list for this project. It's certainly going to be an exciting one and fairly high profile uh, for the athletic department at Texas A&M. Next slide, please. All right, another project. Uh, no pretty pictures for this one yet. We're, we're currently working on the design. So as I alluded to earlier, this is our design build project that we have right now. Uh, so it's the MD Anderson Central Services Center. It's located near the Med Center, uh, just kind of right outside of it. Uh, it will be bidding in Q4 of this year. It is a approximately 380,000 square foot uh, building. So it's a very large one story structure and it will host uh, a number of different departments. I think our last count was 13 different departments uh, from MD Anderson. So pharmacy will be in there. 
uh, sterile processing, food services, lab services, and a variety of other support functions uh, to serve MD Anderson. Uh, it's a really cool project, and we are excited that uh, we're, we're partnering up with MD Anderson on this one. We'll go to the next slide. So that was just a, a brief introduction. You know, that, that's four projects that we have coming this year. All four of them uh, are super exciting, at, at least for us, and, and we want to be partners with you on them. So uh, we'd like to open it up for questions, and we'd be happy uh, to answer any questions that you might have for Manhattan as a company, uh, myself, or our project team. All righty, our registered participants, do you have any questions for Manhattan while they are here? There are a number of you on the call, so please, please, please type your chat, I mean your questions in the chat, and we will certainly ask those questions on your behalf. Okay, Andrew, somebody just said, um, what is the difference between the lump sum and the construction at risk? Can you explain? Yeah, so uh, lump sum bids, and, and that, that's a good question. I, I probably could have did a little bit better job at it. So, uh, a, and the reason I talk about it is um, lump sum bids are projects that we are competing against other general contractors. Uh, so, a, a lot of the K-12 projects that you see out in the market uh, are you know typically a lump sum bid. So that's when you're getting an invitation to bid from myself and then also you know eight, you know, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's 10 other general contractors. Uh, anytime it's like a CM at risk or a design build project, you're only getting that invite from Manhattan because it's a project that we've secured with the client direct. Um, I had a question about your building connect system. Okay. Um, are the pl uh, the drawings and stuff on that uh, e-commerce as well, or just the bidding process? So we use uh, building connected for all of our solicitations for bid. So all of the projects that we have are posted to Building Connected, and that's where all of the drawings and specs okay. and addenda, everything for the project lives in Building Connected for us. Okay, thank you. Mark, uh, Andrew Marquetta Harris asked, what is the best advice for a firm uh, when it comes to bidding? Meaning, should I focus on low-hanging fruit? So I would, you know, it's, it's I, I'm not, quite certain I, I understand the, the low hanging fruit side of it, uh, but I'll, I'll say, you know, one, one approach, if you haven't bid with Manhattan before, uh, I would say, you know, the, the first thing to do would identify a project that you think you're, you're well suited to bid on. So maybe if you've done some county work in the past, you know, you might want to target the, the Harris County CSCD project with and then send Joe or myself an email and say, hey, I did this cool project last year. It was successful. I'd be interested in bidding this project and just introduce yourself. Um, you know, it's it's all always good to, to know who's bidding work. And then also just follow up with your bids. Uh, so if you submit a bid to us and, you know, probably not the hour after, uh, but maybe the next day or, or two days later, you know, reach out, hey, I just wanna make sure you received our bid. Do you have any questions? Um, and so it's really, you know, about, you know, reaching out, asking, you know, saying, you know, asking us, do you think this is the right fit for us? And then following up after, after you bid. Uh, Marquetta again asked, well, first of all, she says she was referring to the small jobs uh, relative to the low hanging fruit. Okay. And then uh, she also asked another question, how much experience do I need to have in order to be eligible for projects? Yeah, so uh, when when we look at pre qualification, so there there is some financial stuff that we do look for. So um, if you've never done, you know, a, a half million dollar contract before, 
and we're looking at a scope of work that might be you know a two million dollar contract then you know that obviously might not be a great fit uh, but that's also the the point at which we definitely want to hear from you so maybe you're a small electrical firm and you know you're looking at you know the the projects that i i talked about earlier are all fairly sizable um, so that would be a great opportunity to reach out and then we could put you in contact with some of the other electricians bidding and you might be able to partner up uh, but definitely uh, some of the some of the lump sum bid projects we chase and then also um, you know we have some projects that um, I, I'm just finished up one that you know the whole project tabbed out to about a million and a half dollars and so there wasn't any trades in there that were you know bigger than 200 grand so we're not always bidding these super big jobs so yeah when you're talking about that low-hanging fruit if we do put out to bid a smaller project that's definitely can be a great way to get your feet in the door with us Uh, there are some questions in the Q&A as well, um, and one of them is, what documents do I need for a pre-qualification? Okay, so uh, we had that email address from Melissa Boyd, the Houston pre-quals in there, um, and what you'll do is you'll just reach out to her and say, hey, we're interested in bidding your work. Uh, what do I need to get started? Um, I'll, I'll short circuit that a little bit. Uh, the first thing she's going to ask you for is a W-9 dated within the last 90 days. Uh, so for right now, it would be a W-9 dated within, let's just say, 2022. And then she can get you uh, the pre-qualification and the MGP started. So uh, it's pretty simple to get started. There's definitely more paperwork after that. Uh, but have a W-9 dated in 2022, and that'll get you cooking. Thank you. Uh, another question. Hello, do you all use outside recruiting to hire for these projects? Do you use outside recruiting? Uh, so that's not something that we do. So um, when we solicit uh, for subcontractors on our projects, uh, we outline each package as a bid package. So when you get an invitation to bid on a project from us, we'll be inviting you to a specific package, whether that be demolition, concrete, millwork, you know, finishes, specialties, all the way down the list. Uh, so any anytime we're soliciting uh, for subcontractors on our projects, it'll be through Building Connected, and we'll be inviting you to those specific packages. Okay, thank you. Another question, what are the chances of only um, being able to supply materials versus bidding? So, so the, we typically do not procure materials directly. Um, sometimes if we're, if we're going to be bidding on the, the concrete scope of work, so we'll be self-performing concrete, concrete we would solicit for rebar and concrete material uh, quotes. Uh, but as far as a material vendor, uh, that is not something we procure directly. That being said, if you are a paint supplier or a masonry vendor or a gypsum supplier, uh, definitely reach out and we can let you know, you know what subcontractors are bidding on it. So if you're a masonry vendor uh, and you reach out, you know, a couple days or a week before a bid goes in, I can provide you a list of the masonry contractors that are looking at that project and you could bid to them. Uh, but as a general rule of thumb, uh, we do not procure material directly. Okay. That was great information. Thank you, Andrew. Here's another question. Uh, do you have janitorial opportunities for a small business uh, such as mine. My company is a hub and city of Houston MWE and WBE certified. Okay. So on janitorial side, we, on pretty much all of our projects, we do final clean. 
Um, so that's typically a, you know, that's, that's a full pull, you know, you know, it's, it's dirty when we're done and then it's got to look gorgeous for the client at the end of the day. Uh, so that would be, you know, dust and sweeping, mopping floors, washing windows, you know, that, that full pull cleaning service. And we are always looking for final clean bidder. So absolutely uh, reach out to me if you're interested in bidding uh, final clean for our project. Deidre, any more questions in the Q&A? Um, does Manhattan include environmental impact uh, both during construction and pre-construction phase? So on a number of our projects, there are, trying to make sure I understand this question. Um, so some of our projects do have environmental abatement requirements. Uh, I know out, out at the airport, we've had to do some abatement work. Uh, when we're working on you know, demolition projects, we do have asbestos abatement. Um, as far as you know, um, environmental impacts, it, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a struggle understanding this, this specific part of the question. Um, as far as if they are a consultant or a vendor or a subcontractor, but um, there are often environmental impacts to the projects and we definitely have to deal with them. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, how do we get an EMR rating when we are told that we do not need it by the insurance agent? So, the only time I'm familiar with an insurance agent not providing an EMR is if you haven't been in business long enough or you don't have enough hours worked to have a rating yet. Um, if you've been in business a couple years and you've done a lot of projects, uh, then I would definitely expect you to have an EMR rating. Uh, but if you are a newer firm or, or you don't have a ton of hours yet, uh, then that's definitely when we would kick in and ask for a couple different documents and a little bit more information. So if you don't have an EMR rate yet, that's, that is not a, that's not a giant red, red flag to us. We, we work with a number of firms that don't have an established rating yet. Uh, we would just need a little bit more information. Um, but that's that's not a deal killer on Jason projects with us. Okay, thank you. Um, do you guys have an open door policy for your corporate office in Houston, or appointments only? Uh, so that you know, one of the fun things about our industry is is getting to meet people. Uh, one of the really frustrating things about COVID is it's made it a lot harder. Um, so, you know, our door is open, uh, but it, it can sometimes be harder to, to just stop by and be able to meet with someone. I would say the, the best thing to do would just be to reach out and say, I'm interested in stopping by the office. Uh, let me know if you're available to meet and we'll be able to respond to you and maybe, you know, grab a 15 minute or 30 minute window, uh, that we could sit down and talk. Okay. Um, this one, um, I'm, I probably can answer, but I'm going to ask it. Uh, so for the Harris County, we go through you or Harris County as a subcontractor. They're a, you know, small company and new, new to bidding to, you know, Harris County. Okay. Yeah, so if you've done uh, projects direct with Harris County in the past, then then you're probably a little bit familiar with some of their processes, which is a great thing. Uh, but uh, when you see a solicitation to bid from us and it's coming from Building Connected, uh, you absolutely need to, to submit your proposal to us as Manhattan. Okay, but they definitely have to submit to you to be on your subcontracting plan. Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, that looks like it in the Q and A. Um, I 
have another one. How do we get an EMR rating? Our insurance company says uh, we don't need it. Did you read that one already? Yeah, I did. Okay. Oh, they maybe they sent it again. Okay, I'm sorry. I, it is in there twice, so I kind of. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think that is it. Mm -hmm. Well, Manhattan, thank you so much. Your um, Manhattan's con uh, contact information is on the screen. So for those of you um, seeking more information and maybe have a question but didn't ask it for whatever reason, uh, please screenshot the screen so that you can get Manhattan's contact information. Uh, their entire team is listed. Well, not entire team, but their team is listed there. And certainly you can email them uh, with any questions you have. Again, Andrew, fantastic job. We are always delighted to have Manhattan with us. Thank you so very much. All right, it was an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. All right, great job, everybody. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy your lunch. Bye-bye.